Hi, this is Mark. Um, a few days ago I noticed some pretty little bugs flying around. They're actually a moth. They're quite orange and black, clear wings. And I thought, oops, I know I got a problem. I was kind of expecting them to show up. But those were, were the adult squash vine borers. And uh, here's the damage. You can see some, see how that looks there? That uh, looks kind of nasty. I was out here the other day and I had done this video and I wasn't too happy with this first part. Uh, the rest of the video will show what I did the other day. But anyway, these squash vine borers, what they'll do is they come in in the spring, they pupate in the ground over winter, emerge as adults in the spring sometime, and they'll lay their eggs on your squash vine, usually near the base, near the ground. Those eggs hatch, and what happens then is those little worms dig into the vine and start munching it from the inside. Usually there's only one in there, there might be more than one, a couple of them. Uh, this actually looks like it's healing up a little bit since the other day uh, when I did the second part of this video. It's going to be the second part. The uh, squash vine borer, they're about a half inch to maybe three quarters of an inch long. The moth, the adult moth, uh, it's one of those moths that uh, they don't really, I guess they're not active at night, they're more active during the daytime, one of the few. It doesn't really look like a moth, it almost looks like a bee. So. We're going to see how this ends up after my little experiment here. I have high hopes for it. Uh, the stuff I'm using is normally used normally used it for on my on my uh, cabbages to get rid of that uh, white butterfly that lays their eggs there, the cabbage uh, butterfly, cabbage worm, whatever they call them. So this time I'm going to try this experiment. We're going to inject some of that stuff right into the vine itself and see if we can kill that bug that way. I know some people cut the vines open. Sometimes that works, sometimes that don't. If you can find the bug right away, you might be all right. If it takes a while, you might end up just slicing your vine all up. So, uh, let's go ahead and see what's going to happen. This year, I'm going to try a new tactic and uh, show you what I'm going to do. What I'm doing. Let's see if I can focus in on that. I'm putting that down. I guess that's as far as I'm going to come in with this lens. So, what I'm doing? I have this stuff here. MVP, bioinsecticide, aqueous flowable based on the cell cap encapsulation system. What this is, it's a organic uh, substance. It's a delta endotoxin of bacillus, bac, bac, uh, good one, bacillus thuringiensis. Anyway, it goes on and tells us what it is. And this, uh, what it is, is it's not a typical poison. It's a, a, a bacillus. It gets in the worm's stomach as it's eating and uh, it sets them off their food. They don't eat anymore, they stop eating and they just die. So that's what we want. This stuff can be sprayed on or whatever in the morning and I'd wait till it dries but you can go out in the fields right away. You can get your food in right away. If you got food you're gonna crops that you're gonna harvest that day. I don't like to be spraying it on if you're gonna harvest them anyway. It takes a day or two I guess for it to start working. Got this from Gardens Alive. Had this quite a few years. I think it's still alright. It's one of those deals. I probably didn't need this big of a uh, an amount is 32 ounce probably could have got the half size but you look at that and the prices and you think well I might as well spend the extra few bucks and get the big one and there you are with a 10-year supply so that's that but what I'm doing here I'm not spraying it on I've got way back when my wife worked in the hospital and I got some of these hypodermics and what I had used them for years and years ago was uh, when you go fishing there's a whole system you know, with night crawlers. You blow the end of the night crawler up a little bit, and with the sinkers and whatnot, you get it down to the bottom, it floats up a little bit, and the fish see it, whatever. Ouch! But I'm going to use this. I've been using it. I just happened to think to do a little video. And I put uh, some of the stuff in here, and we're sucking it up into this syringe. So let's do that. Suck it up. And I wasn't too sure if it'd go up in here. This is a fine needle, but it does work. So these little bacillus must be pretty tiny. And all I'm going to do, let's get in on that stem again, and we're going to see if this works. I've never tried it. I've heard of other people doing it. And okay, yeah, we can get right down in there. That's good. And I'll try to focus again. There we go. I'm just going to stick that in. You can see how much I got in there. It's kind of a brown color. Uh, Mix this, mix it, it's kind of funny because it depends on how bad your infestation is. It's anywhere from one and a half to six tablespoons per gallon. So 
I kind of go on the heavy side just to make sure I got enough. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to inject this into, I'll start right here where it's pretty obvious. Just inject that needle in there. You can feel where it's hollow. That stem is a little bit, gives a little resistance and then all of a sudden uses up. I just squirt a little bit there. And I'm going to follow up the stem a little bit. I'm not quite sure where that worm is. I'm not actually trying to hit the worm. I'm just trying to get enough in here. See, there's the hollow spot. It's going in. Get enough in there that uh, the worm eventually, or hopefully really quick, is going to be ingesting that. Get in his stomach, he'll stop eating, and he'll die. I'll try to find some good pictures of this thing. I, I saw these things flying around the other day, so I knew I was going to have a problem with them. I knew I probably had a problem already at that time, by the time I see them. I'll try to get some of those on this video. Uh, Mark here. I thought we'd do a short, quick update on our Hi, this is Mark. zucchini plants. And a uh, um, like few days ago, good. I noticed I some got the bug out of there. pretty little bugs flying around. They're actually the one that we did. Yeah, quite orange and black. Clear wings. And I thought, oh, one. I know I got a problem. It's all looking kind of pretty good. Them to show up. Yellow Those squash. were were the adult squash, vine, squash borders. Doing really good. Doing too good. And uh, here's the damage. The you can see some. Eating. Can't eat them all. And only got see how that looks there. Well, that, uh, three hills kind of nasty. Zucchinis. I was out here the other day and, and uh, I had done this video and I wasn't too happy with this two first of part. The, yellows. Uh, the rest of the video will show what I did the other day. But anyway, these squash vine borders, what they'll do is they come in in the spring, they pupate in the ground over winter, emerge as adults in the spring sometime, and they'll lay their eggs on your squash vine, usually near the base, near the ground. Those eggs hatch, and what happens then is those little worms dig into the vine, and start munching it from enough. the inside. Usually there's only one in there, there might be more than one, a couple of them. Uh, this actually looks like it's healing up a little bit since the other day. Uh, when I did the second part of this video, it's going to be the second part. The uh, squash vine borer, they're about a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch long. The moth, the adult moth, uh, it's one of the moths that uh, they don't really, I guess they're not active at night, they're more active during the daytime, one of the few. doesn't really look like a moth, it almost looks like a bee. So we're going to see how this ends up after my little experiment here. I have high hopes for it. Uh, the stuff I'm using is normally used, normally used it for on my, on my uh, cabbages to get rid of that uh, white butterfly that lays their eggs there, the cabbage. Uh, butterfly, cabbage worm, whatever they call them. So this time I'm going to try this experiment. We're going to inject some of that stuff right into the vine itself and see if we can kill that bug that way. I know some people cut the vines open. Sometimes that works, sometimes that don't. If you can find the bug right away you might be alright. If it takes a while you might end up just slicing your vine all up. So, uh, let's go ahead and see what's going to happen. This year I'm going to try a new tactic and uh, show you what I'm going to do. What I'm doing. Let's see if I can focus in on that. I bring that down. I guess that's as far as I'm going to come in with this lens. So what I'm doing? I have this stuff here from. I'm to, kind of in the back of the camera here. My I told you what kind of camera I've got. MVP, bio-insecticide, aqueous, flowable based on the cell cap encapsulation system. What this is, it's a organic uh, substance. It's a delta endotoxin of bacillus, bacillus, bacillus good one, bacillus thuringiensis. Anyway, it goes on and tells us what it is. And this, uh, what it is, is it's not a typical poison. It's a, a, a bacillus. It gets in the worm's stomach as it's eating and uh, it, it sets them off their food. They don't eat anymore. They stop eating and they just die. So that's what we want. This stuff can be sprayed on or whatever in the morning and I'd wait till it dries but you can go out in the fields right away. You can get your food in right away. If you got food you're gonna 
crops that you're going to harvest that day. I don't like to be spraying it on if you're going to harvest them anyway. It takes a day or two, I guess, for it to start working. Got this from Gardens Alive. Had this quite a few years. I think it's still all right. It's one of those deals. I probably didn't need this big of a uh, an amount. It's 32 ounce. Probably could have got the half size, but you look at that and the prices, and you think, well, I might as well spend the extra few bucks and get the big one. And there you are with a 10 year supply. So that's that. But what I'm doing here, I'm not spraying it on. I've got way back when my wife worked in the hospital, and I got some of these hypodermics. And what I had used them for years and years ago was uh, when you go fishing, there's a whole system uh, with night crawlers. You blow the end of the night crawler up a little bit, and with the sinkers and whatnot, you get it down to the bottom, it floats up a little bit, and the fish see it, whatever. But I'm going to use this. I've been using it. I just happened to think to do a little video. And I put uh, some of the stuff in here, and we're sucking it up into this syringe. So. Let's do that. Suck it up. And I wasn't too sure if it'd go up in here. This is a fine needle, but it does work. So these little bacillus must be pretty tiny. And all I'm going to do, let's get in on that stem again. And we're going to see if this works. I've never tried it. I've heard of other people doing it. And, okay, yeah, we can get right down in there. That's good. I'll try to focus again. There we go. Just going to stick that in. You can see how much I got in there. It's kind of a brown color. Uh, mix this. Mix it. It's kind of funny because it depends on how bad your infestation is. It's anywhere from one and a half to six tablespoons per gallon. So I kind of go on the heavy side just to make sure I got enough doesn't really matter. I'm going to inject this into, I'll start right here where it's pretty obvious. Just inject that needle in there. You can feel where it's hollow. That stem is a little bit, gives a little resistance then all of a sudden uses up. I just squirt a little bit there. And I'm going to follow up the stem a little bit. I'm not quite sure where that worm is. I'm not actually trying to hit the worm. I'm just trying to get enough in here. See, there's the hollow spot. It's going in. Get enough in there that uh, the worm eventually, or hopefully really quick, is going to be ingesting that. You get in the stomach, it'll stop eating, and you'll die. I'll try to find some good pictures of this thing. I, I saw these things flying around the other day, so I knew I was going to have a problem with them. I knew I probably had a problem already at that time, by the time I see them. I'll try to get some of those on this video. So that's what I'm doing. A little project. Uh, Sprayed these squash the other day with that that copper, that soap shield, and give you a quick review. Did look does look like it stopped this mildew right in its tracks. Stuff that was there is still showing up a little bit, but overall, it doesn't look like it spread. So I'm thinking that uh, worked out pretty good for us. There, this was the plant that started showing at first. This is the, uh, there's, there's a pretty, you know, these guys are, are, they don't like to sit down. We'll, we'll stop chasing him around. Real pretty, what yellow swallowtail. Got quite a few of them around. Um, so as you can see, that uh, looks like that stopped it. Newer leaves don't have any. A few more days, it don't rain. I'll probably spray it again, get the newer leaves. All this stuff does, it's got to be on there. It's not something that the plant really absorbs. Well, that's it for now. And, uh, we'll see ya.